everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Patreon, on Pinterest, on Twitter, uh, maybe they call it X now, whatever. <laughs> but you can find my uh, stuff in a variety of places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Tonight, I'm going to share about a brand new book that I'm really excited about called Dancing the Chinickling. I'm going to talk about that in just a second and some cool resources you can use with that if you're interested. Um, but before I do, so a quick couple quick things. If you hear about any links, videos, resources, cool stuff you really want to hear in these videos, um, there's a page on my blog, uh, makemomentsmatter.org slash video, where you can find all the links and resources for this uh, video and every video I do. Or you can just click the link at the bottom of the caption of whatever you're watching or listening to this. You should be able to go straight there. Um, this is week 14 of Musical Mondays for the fall. Um, this is, I think, my sixth year doing this. Um, But usually I only do 15 a semester. So next week is my last week for the semester. Um, And I typically on that 15th week do like questions or uh, what are you wondering or what do you want to hear more about? So um, on the links page, I put a a quick survey. Um, Please just if you're interested or you have a question, you want to learn more, you're like, hey, you did this lesson or whatever. How did it go? Um, Leave me any kind of question you want. Um, I will do my best to answer that. If nobody puts any questions, I guess I'm just going to. I don't know, have a really short video <laughs> or maybe I'll just like riff on whatever I want to talk about. So uh, maybe you should add questions so I don't like, you know, spend the whole time talking about puppets. I don't know. Anyway, um, so that that's there if you want. If you want to add questions, you can find that on the links page. Um, and all next week, I'm going to be answering questions and um, your thoughts there. Um, oh, and you can make it anonymous if you want. I don't know if that if that matters to you, uh, but you can. But if you want to know, you can leave. You want me to know, you can leave your name. Um, Okay, so um, I just got back from the American Orf Schulwerk Association National Conference. It was amazing. It's always amazing. If you are an elementary music teacher and you're like, I really want to go to one conference, like, where should I go? Should I like spend the money and go to Texas to TMEA? Should I like go to Ohio? Should I whatever? I would say first you should go to the AOSA conference. Next year it's going to be in Lexington, Kentucky. It is just a fabulous, fabulous um, PD convention workshop, but it's, it's the, the people are great. Um, so, uh, if you were there, I hope that you got so much from it. If you weren't there, come join us next year in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, but anyway, I, I had a great time at AOSA. I presented a session on critical thinking and workshop work. Um, and it was super fun and I got to take a bunch of sessions. I learned a lot. Um, and, uh, now I got to kind of go on a little bit of a break. So, I'm not presenting for a while until January. If you want to see me in person and you live in Colorado, I'm going to be at Colorado Music Educators um, on January 31st. I think I'm doing four sessions maybe. Um, So come sign up. I hope that I'll see many of you there. And then a week later, I'm going to be in Kentucky at the Kentucky Music Educators Association Conference um, doing three sessions. I can't remember. uh, Several sessions at both uh, Colorado Music Educators and Kentucky Music Educators. And that's just the end of January, beginning of February. So uh, if you want to see me in person, you could do that there. Or if you want to see me right now, um, I have a Patreon page where you can go and get lots of great ideas. I'm adding stuff all the time. I add all my lesson plans um, week by week. I link to all the resources. If there's a video about something, I have a written lesson plan so you can take it and use it in your classroom if you want. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff there too. But if you want to see me in person, I'll be in Colorado and Kentucky coming soon. 
Um, one of the things I love about going to conferences like AOSA, um, like Colorado Music Educators or Kentucky Music Educators is, um, yes, you get to go to a lot of cool sessions and those are great. You learn a lot and you come back with a lot of great ideas you can use right away or you can implement over time. I love that. Um, I also love just like meeting people and talking with people and learning from people, um, sharing stories, swapping stories, finding out what they're doing, seeing how you can do that differently. I just got some great ideas for my second grade program by just mentioning it to people at conference. I'm like, oh yeah, I did something like that. Here, here, I'll send you my slides or whatever. Um, so you get a lot just from connecting with other people. I also love going to the exhibits, checking through and seeing like instruments I might want for my classroom, especially children's books. Y'all know I love children's books. I'm going to talk about one today. Um, seeing what new puppets are out there, stuff like that. But I, I love going to conferences because I just, I feel like I get so much from being around people, going to sessions, going to the exhibit halls, just getting stuff there. So, um, and I met a lot of people at this last conference who were like, hey, I watched the Musical Mondays videos. That was so awesome. Um, I always joke that like, I, I, I see people in real life and they're like, I like those videos or I listen to the podcast and like, um, I, I sit and I talk at my phone. So it's so <laughs> nice to hear that like, Hey, it was, you know, like it was a great, uh, helpful thing, you know, so it's not just like me just, you know, talking to my computer anyway. Um, so, uh, I hope that, um, uh, you get to go to conferences and get to share and stuff like that. Um, one of my favorite things though, is getting ideas from other people and connecting with other people. And this book that I'm going to share about tonight, dancing with Tenickling came from, uh, my trip to Manitoba a few weeks ago. Um, and it was a gift from a new friend in Canada. Um, and so I wanted to share about it. I wanted to take a couple weeks, think about it, look at resources and then share it with y'all. So it's been a couple weeks and I wanted to share this book um, and then give you a couple ideas about what you might do. I know a lot of people already do tinickling in their school, um, which is a traditional Filipino dance, um, a, a style really. And um, I know a lot of people already do stuff like this. So this might be a cool book um, to pair with the teaching of tinickling. Or if you, you know, like every year you like, do to in like fourth grade or whatever. Maybe this is a book that you read in second or third grade to like get kids thinking about like when it's their turn a couple years later um, to, you know, to make that connection. Or maybe you do like to and you like share like a, a, a performance and the school gets to see it. Well, this is a cool book that you could hand out to classrooms so they could like prepare. What's that going to look like? What does that mean? And just to make fun connections. Um, so I'm going to read the book and then I'm going to share like some of the cool stuff you might do with it. Um, I don't do tinickling yet. It is a goal for me and my PE teacher to first of all, get the poles. Cause you have to have like long, either bamboo or PVC poles. Um, so to get that, it takes a little bit of work. You can't just like walk in tomorrow and do it unless you have, I mean, the, the stuff to, to do it. But, um, it's one of my goals for this year. My PE teacher and I are going to collaborate on that. Sammy, if you're listening, this is, I'm, I'm saying it now. So we have to, we have to do it, but, um, it's a really cool book. It's, it's very new. I think it's just out in the last year or so. Um, let me check. I don't want to be wrong about that. It's from Sleeping Bear Press, and uh, which is based in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yeah, just a year old. So um, very, very new. Dancing with Tinickling by Bobby Payton, illustrated by uh, Dia Bell Serna. So let me read through and talk just a little bit. Dancing the Tinickling. Jojo, come dance, Lola says. While the clappers tap slide the bamboo, Lolo twangs his banderia and croons. Clap, tap, tap, clap. Lola is barefoot slapping, toes a-tapping. Clap, tap, tap, clap, and all that laughing. So this is really cool because you could see the long bamboo poles that often have like the the colorful uh, tape or rope or whatever this is around the, uh, the sides. Um, so it looks very much like what you would see if you were doing tinickling in a traditional setting. Jojo tries dancing to a bamboo beat, whirling, twirling, singing in um, Tagalog. I always say that wrong, sorry. Tagalog, singing in Tagalog, clap, tap, tap, clap, but instead trips over his feet. Lola leaps in and hops out, bamboo poles cracking beneath her toes. Clap, tap, tap, clap. Lola learned to dance in the Philippines and now lives in America. She teaches the tinickling at the cultural center. 
clap, tap, tap, clap, and dances hip hop with her friends. She makes it look so easy dancing between two worlds. Jojo's also learning to dance between two worlds. He speaks Tagalog at home, monopolola, which is like a traditional way that um, you speak to elders basically like to get a blessing. At least that's what my research tells me. If I'm wrong, please correct me. He speaks Tagalog at home and English with his friends. He eats lumpia and adobo, but loves cheeseburgers and fries too. Clap, tap, tap, clap. Let's see. Sayao na bata, Lola says. Dance now, child. Clap, tap, tap, clap. Jojo leaps between the snapping bamboo. The beat vibrates up through his shoes. Clap, tap, tap, clap, tap, tap, clap. He spins and hops to the rhythm of his life. Clap, tap, tap, clap, tap, tap, clap. He's dancing the tinickling. Lolo slows his strumming. Clap, tap, tap, clap, but the dance never ends. Jojo jumps out from between the bamboo, clap, and into Lola's arms. Tap, tap. Mahalkita, clap. I love you too. Tap, tap, clap, tap, tap. Clap, tap, tap, clap. And that's the end. It talks a little bit at the end about um, tinickling, um, which they say is the national dance of the Philippines. You use a pair of bamboo poles, usually six to 12 feet long. And there are people on each side who are moving the poles while the dancers jump in and out and around. Um, and the, the, some, usually there's music playing or people singing, but the, the sticks themselves, the poles themselves, um, create a, a rhythm as they clap together and clap and, and smack on the floor. Um, and so the, the poles are rhythmic. Um, they're rhythmic, but also they um, are moving all the time. So the poles are going in and out, right? And they're hitting the floor. And so like you really have to get out of the way, which is why um, the little kid in the story, he gets caught up in, and... Um, gets hit and stuff and like that's normal when you're learning how to do it so um it's it's a really cool it's a really cool dance form and it gives you a little bit of information at the end at the back but there are so many things out online um online where you can learn more um about tinickling and um like how it's performed on the links page i put a bunch of different well uh, three or four or five different videos that i thought were super helpful um, to, if, even if you're just like, we're not going to do this at my school, but I want to give kids a background. Um, there's a video by the UCLA, um, uh, like the Filipino dance group there from 2017, where they like, um, sh it's like a, a six minute long video that shows different tinickling moves and dances, which is really super cool. Um, there's like a tutorial video that's like maybe like 30 seconds long that shows you like the first step you might do and it's in a series. So then you like the next step you might do the next. So if you're learning it or you're teaching it at your school, there's um, a video that gives you some ideas about that. Um, and then, ooh, there was, there's another video that I posted there. One of the things, it does have a couple words in Filipino, which I do not know how to speak. And like the, the name of the language, I say, I've said it wrong because I've never, I've not heard it out loud. I've only like read it in my head. <laughs> you know, when you do that and you like learn, oh, that's how the word is pronounced. And I said it wrong in my head for so long and it's not right. But um, it's Tagalog, I think. And um, if you go to T-A-G-A-L-O-G.com, um, it, there, it's a dictionary of um, this language and how you pronounce the words. Um, so it's, it was really helpful as I was going through here, trying to figure out how to say some of these words that you can go and you can like listen to it, say it, you can listen and it gives you some information like how it's used. So if you don't speak, uh, it, Filipino and you're not, or, or not Filipino, if you don't speak Tagalog and you're not familiar with it, um, you can go to this website and it gives you some helpful things. Um, it doesn't have a slow down button that I found yet, but I'm going to figure that out and learn it. Um, oh my gosh. And thank you in the comments for giving uh, more feedback. Tagalog. Is that right? I'm working on it. Okay. Um, but you can uh, go to this website, um, tagalog.com, 
and get um, definitions and pronunciation. And um, it's very, very helpful actually. But um, if you're gonna do this book, um, or if you're gonna use this book and you're gonna teach the nickeling, um, a couple of things you're gonna wanna think about. You're gonna wanna figure out ahead of time how you're gonna teach it um, and how you're gonna, uh, the, where you're gonna get the resources because you either need bamboo poles or um, I know a lot of people who have seen use PVC pipe because maybe you can't get bamboo or get bamboo cheap or it's harder to source or whatever. Um, a lot of times you can get PVC pipe really easily um, and not have to worry about that. Um, I know some people worry about, um, cause, cause you have to two, you have to have one kid on each end of, of the poles, right? So they're the long poles and their kids holding them. And one of the, the things that I've heard of from teachers, cause again, I've not taught this yet. One of the things that I've heard from teachers is kids smacking their hands on the ground, um, and trying to figure out how to hold it just right so that that doesn't happen. And I've seen some people who have like added like PVC handles to the PVC pipe. So instead of just like long poles, there's like a part that sticks up so you can hold that and tap it. But um, the thing I've seen in a lot of videos is like, you just take a two by four and you put that on the ground underneath the poles. So when the kids slam the poles down, they're not slamming right onto the ground. The, the poles are hitting like a, a long piece of two by four piece of wood. So they're not smacking right onto the ground. It's like, if you imagine like here are the poles, right? Okay, but my, my flare pens are poles. <laughs> and instead of going straight onto the ground, um, you know, there's like a, there's like a buffer. So, okay, I'm not visualizing this very well, but in one of the videos that I shared, there's um, a, a, an explanation, or not an explanation, there's a visual of how that group is doing it. Um, so it, it gives you some options if you want to teach to Nickling. But this is a super, super cool book. It is very new. Um, so you're probably not going to find it used, but um, I put a link to it. I found it on Amazon. I'm sure you could also go to sleepingbearpress.com, which is the web publisher's website, and get it. Um, but I just think it's really cool because it talks about this kid and how he's trying to, you know, balance between two worlds, just like going between the two poles. Um, he's trying to balance between um, this like American Western world and also like his Filipino heritage. And so I think that's just like so super cool. Also like his connection to his grandma and um, to all the things that are part of his life. So um, whether or not you have Filipino kiddos, like this is a really cool book. And if you're going to teach the Nickling, it's also a great book to like give you a little bit of point of reference and um, more information. So there's more on the links page if you're interested, but check out the book. Uh, if nothing else, like go to your library and get it there and see, like read through, see if you could use it, think about it. Um, my library last year, my, my, not my school library, but my like local library, um, they did not have a book that I wanted, not this one. There was a different book. Um, and so I went on their website and there was like a, Hey, do you want a book? Request the book here. And I requested it and they bought it. And of course, you know, not every library is going to be able to do that or do it right away. But like, if there's a book you really want and you're like, oh, but I've spent like my budget for the year or I can't buy another book right now, go to your library and see if they'll buy it for you. Either your school library or your local library, um, not just for you, but like for your community, like go, go and ask because you never know and it's possible or, you know, put it on your like teacher wish list and tell your PTA or, you know, put it out to your friends and family on whatever you use for social media. If you use social media and say like, hey, there's this really cool book. I'd love to have it. Um, it supports a really great author and it's brand new and a, a small publishing house. It's not like scholastic, you know, it's like, it's a small, small publishing house. So like, um, it, it's worth reaching out and asking. So anyway, lots of links on the links page. I hope this gave you a fun start, um, and a fun idea. Um, I don't believe West music has it yet. I haven't seen it. I didn't see it at their booth at AOSA and I haven't seen it online, but I'll send it to, them and say like, hey, you should get this because um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, where this is made, is not that far from Coralville, Iowa, where West is. So I'll, I'll tell them they should add it. But um, if you can find it on West Music, get it on West Music. In fact, let's look and see if it's there. This is why having the internet is so cool. It looks like West Music does not have the book yet, but I will email Judy Pine tonight and say, hey, you should get this book. And who knows? Maybe they'll get it. 
Okay. Well, anyway, I hope this was a fun start with this book. Go and check it out. Um, see for yourself. There are also read-alongs online if you want to um, hear it again, see it again with closer look at the pictures. But I hope this gives you a cool new resource. Thanks to my friends in Canada for um, turning me on to this and letting me know about this. And um, yeah, and I hope you go check it out and see if it'll work for you. All right. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you next week. Don't forget, if you have questions, you can go to the links page and add questions and I will answer them next week. Questions about literally whatever you want. Some may have talked about this semester or not, or something you're interested in, or something you're like struggling with at school. Put them in the, que in the questions for next week's Musical Mondays, the last Musical Mondays of the fall. And um, I will answer them next week. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.